Hello everyone, my name is James Spurin. Welcome to this presentation, Storage OS Technical Use Cases. Why enterprises trust storage OS with mission critical production workloads. So, what is Storage OS? Storage OS is a persistent storage solution that can be installed as a container without any proprietary kernel or hardware requirements and can virtualize the disks on each node in a Kubernetes cluster. This can be physical, as in bare metal, virtual in VMware, or cloud disks in cloud instances. We aggregate the storage in a pool that spans every node in the cluster. From there, we then have the platform integrations with Kubernetes to dynamically provision volumes, on-demand, and a cluster-wide mesh to virtually instantiate an application volume on any node in the cluster. This means that as the cluster changes, i.e. upgrades or scaling, and applications move, the data is always available to the application on any node. It is a full end-to-end -end storage platform with data services like replication to protect data against node or disk failure, and encryption to secure data at rest and in transit. Our market-leading performance means applications, databases, message queues, analytics, and many more run faster on Storage OS. The first use case we want to talk about is the importance of low latency performance and reliability for key workloads. This use case is a trading platform for a tier one bank and is an area particularly close to my heart as I previously worked for both Nomura and Goldman Sachs. In this case, Storage OS provides the storage engine for a trading platform, delivering millions of trades every day. In a trading platform, we have key requirements around reliability, robustness, and data integrity. Synchronous replication from Storage OS provides that availability. Our control plane ensures that the data is available across all of the nodes and is accessible everywhere. Should there be any node or availability zone failures within the environment, we do all of this whilst providing deterministic low latency performance. Low latency performance directly correlates to the number of transactions that can be handled in any given period and is of particular importance for message queues where applications are extremely sensitive to serialization for those workloads. We provide consistent performance, whether it is sequential or random access patterns and are highly optimized for random workloads using small block sizes that translate very well to transactional systems. Another goal that banks want to achieve in Kubernetes environments is to remove the complexity of building individual nodes or services on a one-by-one -one basis. Storage OS with Kubernetes allows them to build consistent, fully automated systems that are in themselves reproducible. If a node is lost or an application needs to be restarted or moved somewhere else, the entire definition of that application is encompassed in a YAML file and can easily be restarted or moved to any other node in the environment. As this is YAML, it is also portable, allowing the app in its entirety to move between environments. For example, QA, dev, staging, and production. So as you can see here, Storage OS's architectural design for high performance, reliability, and its declarative nature lends itself exceptionally well to financial services. The second use case is how we're providing our storage engine for different service providers in a number of different configurations. We believe the cloud isn't a place and that enterprises want self-service, an on-off consumption model, and automation for deployment and operations, all of the things that Kubernetes brings. So what we're seeing is a number of different service providers who are providing value-added platforms to provide their customers. 
This can range from financial customers to enterprise customers involved in other areas. Retail, media, healthcare, that are on their own cloud native transformation journey. An interesting aspect of Kubernetes and Storage OS with the advent of projects like KubeVirt, Kubernetes can now manage virtual machines, therefore taking on the role that traditionally required a dedicated hypervisor. When combined with persistent storage from Storage OS, providers can now provide an infrastructure as a service platform, now being able to manage VMs on demand for their customers, akin to the offerings that you typically see in the larger public cloud organizations. Storage OS is a key enabler here, as whilst all of the other components, networking, configuration management, virtualization, etc., are highly available with a multitude of open source solutions, providing storage that is highly performant, robust, and reliable, shared nothing architecture, is a fundamentally difficult problem to solve. This is what Storage OS has been building, and we've successfully integrated our solution with service providers who offer services as per this case study. This last case study that I'd like to talk about is some of the new patterns and architectures that are enabled with the velocity and the flexibility of having a composable end-to-end -end storage platform. Kubernetes and Storage OS provides the facilities that allow dynamic provisioning and dynamic movement of data and workloads in those environments. Operations like creating a volume, deleting a volume, and moving volumes between nodes take place in sub-second type. This enables these new patterns where, for example, we have a customer running CICD as a service, and those dynamic requirements typically create and delete tens of thousands of environments every day, resulting subsequently in tens of thousands of volumes being changed. Some of the features within Storage OS that allow this to happen are unique features in our control plane, such as disaggregated consensus. Disaggregated consensus essentially is a fancy way of saying every volume in Storage OS can independently make decisions about placement and failure recovery. This removes any serialization point in our control plane, which means lots of operations can happen in parallel across nodes in the cluster, thus powering these new workloads that follow on from the theme of self-service templates, allowing these organizations to run anything as a service. If you wish to access more information, you can access our Performance Benchmarking Cloud Native Storage Solutions Report. This was recently done by the storage expert, Chris M. Evans, and within this, Storage OS was compared to three of our competitors. For each test that we were actually compared against, Storage OS outperformed these competitors. The bottom left there, we have the Storage OS platform architecture overview. So again, if you want to know more about the platform, please visit this. There is the Storage OS documentation, which is docs.storageos.com. We offer a free Storage OS developer edition, which includes five terabytes, and this can be accessed at www.storageos.com. In the bottom right hand corner, if you wish to speak to the Storage OS engineers, we have our own Slack channel. Please come and join us and chat about all things storage. Lastly, in addition, the team is on the booth to answer your specific questions, so please come by to discuss your technical use cases with us. We thank you for the time you spent with us today, and if you wish to learn more about Storage OS, please visit www.storageos.com.